So then input log using input log together with uh, trans log. Um, so here I have put some information. So if um, uh, if you want to do this, then you can use input log. Input log is a research tool that has a website and you can go to that website uh, clicking on these um, uh, on these links here. Um, that's a, that's a tool that was uh, that was produced by uh, people in Antwerp. Um, and they have a whole website that is dedicated to this tool, what you can do and so on. Um, and I have downloaded, so they have a new version of it. I have downloaded an older version, um, which you can download also from uh, this website here that I showed here. Um, and the process is that we would um, start input log and then set up input log so that it logs the data um, that is typed. And then start trans log, then run this, start here, start input log, start trans log, do the translation session, stop trans log after the session is over. Uh, the, in this XML file, stop input log. This creates another log file. And then these two log files can be merged into, or better, the input log IDFX file can be merged into a trans log file. And this can then be uploaded to the database. And we can access um, uh, both the, the uh, data that is uh, logged in input uh, in trans log and the one that was used outside translog. Okay, so I go through this process right now and um, start um, start with uh, with translog setting up translog. So we have um, translog supervisor here. I start translog supervisor. I design an experiment in a create a project. Then I only use the keylogger. I don't use the eye tracker here because I have not co uh, connected an eye tracker. I click here on configure experiment. And uh, so I, hmm. well, how can I make this a little bit smaller? So uh, then I, um, I paste in a source text in the upper part. Um, so let's see. Um, so maybe I can use here from news something, for instance, this sentence here. This is then a news sentence, and I take this sentence and I paste it into the source window. I make this a little bit bigger. I only use here one sentence, okay? Uh, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, then I can save this and save this as um translog and I call this um, I call this test two okay so that that is my project uh where I have a source sentence and I will when I click on a user um I can load this and to produce some uh text output there. Then the second thing I need to start input log. And I have installed this somewhere here. In code here, input log. And then if I go back to my um, 
file here. So what I have prepared. So input log usually. Does it say here? Oh, it has started this couple of times. Once is enough. So input log is usually a device that goes together with the word. So that is um, um, that, uh, that if 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 one starts the word together with input log, then it can um, look better into word and figure out what happens inside word because for some reasons it can connect um, um, with the um, with the keystrokes in word. But that's not what we are going to do. So input log is. Um, specialized for logging keystrokes with Word. With Microsoft Word, but we are not going to do this. We want to log keystrokes that are produced anywhere. In the um, on the um, in, in any uh, tool. Um, so then we have to change some of the settings. And then uh, they say, be aware that changing this option will limit the use of certain analysis possibilities that input log provides. Um, so that means input log is not only a tool that to log keystrokes, but also to analyze keystrokes. It has a number of uh, analysis tools that I think I wouldn't. Uh, well, let's see how much we can look into this. Uh, not so much sure. So. We in order to <clears throat> set this up to log stuff outside Word, we go here as this picture shows in file and then uh, set some. Options here and we then. Uh, untick word lock. So if we would tick this. Then uh, and th I think this is the default, so I guess uh, I've already ticked this uh, and it went away. So um, if this is ticked, then it will uh, it will uh, be uh, targeted to or, or configured to look into Word. And as it says here, it will start when you start this uh, input lock, it will start a Microsoft Word where you can then type. But this is not what we want. Um, we want to uh, log uh, the system in general here, and we want to uh, the focus. We want to uh, log focus events. These are the events when you change the window. So, for instance, I so so now this window is in focus, right? So now, if I take this window here, then this guy here is in focus, even though this is on top. Uh, this is, I guess, in focus and this will be locked and that's what we want to know because we want to know whenever you change the focus, when you go into another window, then it should be locked and we want to keep track of. Um, of these events and then uh, mouse events, uh, uh, keyboard events and mouse events. Uh, well, not so much interested in this for the moment. OK, so we, I think um, that's it. We can then just click here. OK, then we need to say a name here. Um, age 43, OK, uh, whatever what, um, the information is. And I think this is here compulsory because um, it will save automatically the file under this um, under this name here. Um, OK, so um, what else is here? So so this is for recording. Then we have other tabs here. Once we have something, uh, some recorded data, we can go here and analyze the data. Um, uh, maybe you can do this when once we once we are done, we are through. OK, then I just click now record. And from when I click here record, I think it will go in the background. Uh, this program and record everything I will type. So I click record. OK, I can minimize this. And minimize this. 
and then I will go into this user here. I open the project. I open my test project. And when I click on start logging here, it will uh, then uh, show the window, hopefully, and uh, start logging whatever I will type or produce. OK, start here. So um, and maybe I can write something. I for you, which is bank robbed um, since 2019, has many lawsuits. And then, for instance, I don't know what this is, OxyContin. I just, I, I can go into a browser here, for instance. I can open a browser and search for what was this OxyContin. OxyContin. I look for this. OK, there is something. I can go into the website. Uh, I can inform myself maybe what is OxyContin. Um, uh, and then um, I just copy this from here, for instance, as many lawsuits. Um, And then regarding oxycondon, um, and then I maybe what well, I can go back. But the point is uh, that what I want to show, I can write something, and um, I type this word, and then I went to the browser, looked up the stuff here. Um, um, uh, uh, and then I can just continue here, which is now difficult for the company. Okay. So something produced. Okay. I stop, I click on stop logging and I save this file. I, oops, have so many of this and then I call this um, oxycontin, for instance, save this. Okay, now I can go, I hope, where is my input log tool here? I can click on stop recording. Um, input log. And I think input log should have now produced a file that is in my um, folder, um, my installation folder, where is it, documents, uh, input log here, okay? So if I go here, then there are several subfolders uh, and they also have a date. So today is the 31st of May, so it should be this folder here. This one here, and here is this IDFX file that um, was mentioned here. Okay, so it's an IDFX file, and this IDFX file contains all the logging data for this particular session. We can look into this with, for instance, with Notepad, and it's quite long. 
I think. OK, so it has here how many 1500 or so um, lines. And this is how input log records the keystroke data. So. I don't know what all this is. Uh, it's kind of metadata. OK, then I guess this is my name here, so that's the session. Um, and then um, we have events, and that's the stuff that is interesting for us. So it has these events, and then it has encoded here um, for each event several kinds of information. Here, something starts, and then some keystroke was pressed VK. Um, so this is, I guess, the left uh, shift keystroke. Then here is the thing that um, is the focus, right? So here we have um, uh, uh, me focusing, or the focus goes to this translog user, which is the program that uh, was opened here. And then we have a start time of this event and an end time, and you can see, um, I don't know exactly what in what measures this is, but uh, I assume it's maybe milliseconds. So it's the same timestamp here, start at end time. So I clicked, I guess, on this window and it starts, uh, the focus starts in that window here. And then um, I know we are in this focus, in this window, and here, some keystrokes take place. Again, this lift uh, shift keystroke here again. Um, OK, so here we, we can see that the value is the P. And then a U. And then. P, U, R, and this was is was what I typed actually in uh, in the in the user, no, Purdue was it the word? No, the first word was pur u comma space. Here we have some coding of the character, and here is another encoding of the character. And then you can see that uh, here we have a start time and end time. So these are different times, I believe. These are uh, timestamps for the key down and the key up. So there are two events actually when you press a keystroke. So there's a key down event and there's a key up event. And um, so this part here is the same, I guess, no? And um, these 415, so 314 to 405. So this is around 90 uh, milliseconds, maybe, uh, that um, was used. So this keystroke, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit long, no? Maybe it's it's not milliseconds. Maybe this is nanoseconds. I don't know, <laughs> actually, because 90 milliseconds for a keystroke would be a bit. I mean, for such a short keystroke would be long. Then here we have. Um, so for instance, this, the difference between this keystroke um, and this one here would be something like 1,100 or so, no? The difference between these two. So this is the end of this space keystroke, and this is the start time for the next keystroke. Okay, and this is again the end for this keystroke. And then we, yes, yeah, so we have all these um, keystrokes logged here in um, in input log. And eventually, um, I can now look for focus, I believe. Eventually, we will see that I went to, so no, I, I wrote all the stuff here, and then I, I went to, um, Google Chrome at this time. And 
Um, then I typed in something, stuff in Google Chrome, oxy, chromine or something. And then I pressed a return. And then I opened Wikipedia here. I did stuff. I went, I was for some time in Wikipedia here. I copied and paste. I guess this is maybe the copy and paste keystroke. And um, then eventually I came back to Translog here. And um, typed in stuff again here. Um, okay, so that's basically what uh, input log records. So you can see it records all the stuff that a translog would also record, and it records the stuff that is was produced outside translog. Now we can also look into uh, the translog file. You want to so that I put this into my desktop, I think, here. And it was this file here. So this is the logging information from Translog. And um, This is the source text that we saw in the beginning. Here, the target text was empty. If I would have pre-filled this, or I could have done this one, then we would have seen that we have already output here. So uh, it could have been, for instance, uh, uh, empty output that would have been here. Okay, and then, but anyway, what, what is the interesting part here is the stuff that starts here. Okay, so eventually, uh, recording starts at time zero, and then I have these mouse up down, um, and I inserted stuff, this. And we can now, you remember that we saw the same keystrokes also, the same sequence of keystroke is logged twice, right? In this um, input log file, slightly differently uh, represented, but we went through this and here too. And um, and then what we can see here is um, oops. okay, so what we can see here is that um, we have all these keystrokes but we don't have the stuff that was produced outside translog. Okay, here we have some mouse keystroke up down. Oh. Um, and And this is then the final output that was produced. OK, so we have two logging files. And um, the thing would now be, so if we had uh, an eye tracker in addition, so we would have also gaze data inside this file here. And now what we want to do, we want to merge this stuff from here into this file here. And the keystrokes that are in common, so we will see that here this timestamp, oh, well, it starts here with time zero, and we have uh, 6.8 seconds after the beginning. We, uh, I started typing here stuff. And if you look at those timestamps here, they look very different, okay? Um, and, um, so the but basically the idea is that here we have a recording time and these two recordings are somehow linear. So there is maybe an offset between these different timestamps. 
But whatever changes are here between these two timestamps, for instance, this is 1380, is it 72 or something? Oh, we can we could look into this here, right? We can try to find this P in this file, in this U, and the different the <clears throat> distance in time here between these two keystrokes is how much? Mm -hmm. Uh, 1780, something like this, no? Am I right? So if we go back here and we try to find this P here, um, where is it? Here. And this U, um so the the it should somehow the difference between the end time here and the end time or the start time here and the start time here should somehow be similar to the difference between these two timestamps and so we can automatically of course compute uh, the differences between all the timestamps here and the difference between all these timestamps here and we can then uh, see how these two timestamps correlate given that we uh, that these two characters are identical so the p is identical to this p here and the u is identical and the sequence of characters is identical here then we can know what is the um, correlation of the time, so which timestamps map. And then for those timestamps that are not here, for those um, keystrokes that are not in this file, we can just extrapolate and assume that um, we can just take these intervals and add those keystrokes into this file. Right? Okay, so there's a, a special script to do this that I would like to show here. Um, it's this script. There's a script called inject idfx.pl, and then we have these two files. This is the input, uh, the translog file and the input log file, and it would create an, a, an output file which then does all these computations, this mapping, and injects. <laughs> as this program <laughs> suggests, now these uh, keystrokes that are here would inject those into this translog file. Okay, so um, we can, this Perl script is on the server, so uh, we can go to um, the server, uh, maybe here. Um, and, um, Okay, so I, well, I just maybe create a new folder, a new folder, which I then call, uh, where is it? New folder, which I uh, rename into input log and uh, where is it? here. Okay, so I can then um, go here and upload this file. Where was it? Uh, uh, on the desktop here, and it was this file here. So I upload this file here, and then I upload also, the input log file, which is um, in my input log folder here, I think here, in this file here, I upload this. So I have these two files here, can upload this. Then I can go open a terminal here. I can go to uh, in log and we see these two files here okay 
And then um, it's this script here. I just copy this stuff here, copy and paste this here. Um, OK, so this in eject uh, IDFX file is, of course, not here, but it is in a directory called data crit um, tprdb bin, and there should be this file inject idfx. It's there. OK, so then we can put um, this first one was. Um, first is the translog file with the minus T option. The second is the input log file with this option here. And the output file, <clears throat> I would give it uh, follow these name conventions that we perhaps have in the translog database, which would be P01, for instance, and then it would be, uh, uh, what did I do? <laughs> I did uh, um, edit no a text with edit with input in input log. I call this I L. Okay, okay, and then I L, and then it's text one. Okay, so so the most <clears throat> frequent distance it counts how often we have distances between these two files and uh, 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 so this is the uh, um, this is the difference between these two so we um, um, so this number is much bigger so it subtracts actually this number i guess from the input log timestamps to get to the translog timestamps and then it merges this. We can look into this file now, P01 here. And um, it will just look like uh, the other file that I had there, but only it will have eventually the input log data here. So um, all this all this was produced in uh, in uh, in translog here, and then it says here input log. It has this special feature IL focus. It says, okay, here is a new tab, and it's in Chrome. And then I type this stuff here, which was in Chrome. And then uh, some uh, uh, some uh, some other keystrokes here. Um, B is I think a return or something. Um, and then um, I uh, focused on Wikipedia here. So I typed this in Google Chrome to find this uh, web page. And then I went to this uh, Wikipedia web page and I stayed there for some time according to these timestamps here. Eventually I came back to, to Translog and because I, copy, I typed copy and paste, Remember, I, I clicked on that word, on this word that was there, and I copied and paste. And this is not recorded in um, in uh, 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 in this tool. And then eventually I came back here into Translog. And um, I think I pasted this word here, right? And then I still wrote this word. I, I had this word in the buffer, in the copy and paste buffer, but then I was back here in Translog 2. I wrote more stuff and then I pasted this word. And then I did other stuff and in the end I continued here. Okay, so we have a, a trace of what was produced inside Translog and outside Translog through these other features that are here in this log file. And you can see also, well, the synchronization may not be accurate. 
for a millisecond or maybe even a couple of milliseconds, but uh, you see that the sequence at least is approximately correct here, right? Okay, so this is the this is the uh, translog file. Now I can take this translog file and upload this <laughs> to the server again. And the way I think, well, it's now on the server and we bring it back to the server. But what I'm trying to do is now I download this file here. This is the file that I created, right? I download this file. I can put this, um, well, somewhere maybe on the desktop, I have this translog folder. I put it there because it's part of that uh, thing somehow. Then um, I can go back here. Uh, this file, OK. And of course, it's the same file that I just downloaded this. I can zip this here. I, I could also have zipped it on the server and then downloaded it. Um, doesn't matter. So I add this to the zip to a zip folder here. I create the zip folder. Now I can go again to the server. I log in to um, to the Yavat to uh, this tool. Okay, I log out from this user and I go to our summer course, summer 2023. Um, 2023. Hope it works. Okay, I can go here. I can choose this file to upload. Uh, where was it? In, uh, in desktop. Translog. This file here. And I call <clears throat> this in log. And I give the language that was. English and English task name. I just doesn't matter so much. And then I can give here this minus minus C for um, for the tokenization. And if I want to talk also this alignment, I can type this SI and I can upload this and it tells me here uh, whether everything correct, it inflates this thing and then it verifies the languages. Everything is correct. It tokenizes here the two languages and there was a similar line uh, version and uh, now it should be here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, input log here. So it has created these two sessions. One session with the data only and the other one with the underscore SI that should have this uh, uh, that uh, uh, should be have uh, alignment automatically alignment and here we can see um, thousands of many no um, <laughs> interestingly since okay um, it has not um, aligned 2019 no, it has aligned 2019 to a comma okay shit happens <laughs> huh? yeah yeah but yes but the 2019 should have aligned to this one here no Get it but maybe maybe it doesn't know it's it's an uh, it's a it's a neural network it's a language model and so maybe it doesn't know very well these numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Anyway, we have something here and one could, of course, now go ahead and correct these alignments and do stuff. But I guess you get the idea. Um, Okay, so I go back here with um, to now actually look into these table. Uh, into these tables, we can go back to uh, TPD and we see here. Um, where was it? Uh, oh. 
so we can uh, I didn't do anything so we can but we were there and we can press on save. Yeah, but alignments uh, it means it uh, convert converts the alignments back into uh, this database format and now um, um, we can download those tables here. Yeah. Okay. And And that's what I want to. Um, oh, we could also actually look from inside um, this tool right now. Um, I can do this too. Um, actually, we could actually. But okay, so let's let's look into these tables from from my my local computer here. Uh, I can do I can unzip this, extract these tables here. And if we look into this, so there's only one um, session here with all these uh, files that uh, I hope you will recognize in the meantime a little bit. ST. So this is a uh, target text S3 PU. And then we have this file here, which contains the external usage of external resources. And that was purposely done for this um, for, 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 for this input log. And here you, we see, OK, I'll, I'll open this maybe in Excel. Uh, open with. Here, open with, does it work with Excel? Oh. OK, so to complicate it, I go here and I, uh, I press on control O. And then it should. Um, open. Browse. Um, where is it? Desktop, branch lock. Here. I can make it show all the files and I want to open <laughs> it thinks it's a okay so here we come to this widget here and we say it's delimited with tabs yes that's correct but often it 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 thinks that it has these funny uh, encodings but all the files in the TPRDB are actually uh, UTF-8 encoded so so we can go here unicode utf8 um okay and i think that's it it opens now this file here and we see all these features that you already know it has uh, three lines so and each line represents now a, a shift a different focus here um, OK, so it says the source language, and the target language. That's what just I inserted in the um, in the uploading file. Then we have the task, which is editing with input log. Text was number one, one participant. And then there are these three kinds of uh, foci <laughs> uh, as translog user. And uh, this is the time when uh, translog was opened. Remember, we had first started input log quite some time before input log, but it um, it skips all the time before uh, the opening of uh, translog, and uh, so it knows when actually translog was uh, was opened. It was a translog user um, at this time here, and then uh, there was a duration. So the, the the idea is if we add this time with a duration, then we would come to this time. Um, it looks like this is true. If we add these two numbers here, then we come to the time uh, when opening this Translog Chrome. And here it says then uh, we were this amount of time in uh, Translog Chrome. Um, there. I edited this stuff here. These are all the, is the concatenation of all the keystrokes. 
and there is some more information here. So I came into this tab when producing the after producing the 52nd keystroke, I produced according to this keystroke ID, I produced 52 keystrokes and then I came into this uh, Chrome. I did some stuff here and when com ben coming back, uh, the next keystroke and translog was keystroke number 53. So, um, so this was the, uh, the 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 source word number number twelve before going uh, into this tab and after coming back and it was the first segment. There's only one segment in this file. Okay, so this is the kind of information that we get from input log in this table, and we can see that this time here is synchronized with the uh, the other time in uh, in translog and the durations here. Um, and we can then make use of this in uh, some ways. So this was basically what I wanted to present today. So the TPRDB is also a public folder. Um, where is it? It should be. It should be. Um, here under source forge, we can go here. You can you can download the entire database with this command here. It's it's a, it's a sub uh, it's a it's under subversion. Uh, it's on source forge and this source forge is a public. Um, uh, is a public data uh, is a public repository where one can upload data like this or share code with your friends and so on and um, and it has a revision system so means you we can go back to a version of it five years ago or some time ago um, uh, so we can look into uh, what was it code here I think, um, and you can see that basically <clears throat> here is here is the bin folder, okay? And that's the same thing uh, what I just showed you here, here, right? These files here, all the stuff is also on publicly available on this uh, source forge in this bin folder here. So this is basically the backup. Uh, of uh, the whole process and you have all these uh, different scripts and if you wanted to use this infuse uh, idfx file you could download this from oh, here I see. yes but to run this on your computer you also need uh, to install perl because this is a perl this doesn't run by itself I think, yeah, so we can look at, into this. So this is the code. It's not very long, but um, so this is the code that do, does the synchronization. It reads the two files and so on, and, um, and it produces this output. You also have here on that server uh, all the public um, studies. So here you have these public studies with the translog and the alignment. So the translog uh, two folder would contain all the log uh, the the recordings from translog two, and the alignment folder would contain the alignments of the data. So there's always these three files per session the ATEC file, the source file, and the target TGT file, and uh, they all have the same structure, and I already explained this. So this is Norwegian, as you can see, um, and this is the tokenization uh, of the Norwegian text. Okay. Um, 
you can look into yeah the ATEC file which has the same structure as I this as I showed recently. So all this is publicly available for free and for um, for research purposes. So several hundred hours of uh, translation data here in this TPRDB and um, much of it with uh, gaze data. Um, yeah. OK, so you can download this whole stuff from here. With this command. And. Um, and it contains and, and then with these uh, with these uh, with this information in the bin folder. <coughs> with these scripts here that are here, you can um, they they are sufficient. They're good enough to produce these tables from the logging and the alignment data. OK, so if you want to do, but you can also use this um, um, this interface here, the browser interface, and that's what we are discussing for some time right now. How to use it. Thank you. And my second question is, uh, how can uh, where can we find the explanations of the titles of Excel? And just now you have open an Excel file, and uh, then there are yes, like uh, uh, n fix and uh, s grade n k d n like this. Yeah. Where can we okay, find the so explanations of this? Okay, so you can go here to this tprdb, and there are is a, yeah um, okay. tab features, and then we can. Um, wait a little bit. <laughs> and features will pop up and then we can look for the table name. So we can look here which table name was it? EX table, mm -hmm. where is it? Uh, activity alignment session feature, keystroke. Here, extend this one here. Um, does it work? No, this one here. How does it work? Why doesn't? And then can click on the features. Okay, and here we have uh, the features that are in this uh, table. And um, so. Yeah, I didn't. So nobody used this actually for many years. So maybe, maybe this is not. I mean, this uh, this external this in infuse IDFX. I only looked into this a couple of days ago to to show it here. But um, and um, uh, mostly it worked. Um, so I didn't maybe not update all these table uh, all this. But here here it says keystroke ID before leaving translog for external window, right? So uh, we have this, oops. Um, we have these keystrokes here. Um, KDIDL, keystroke, keystroke ID L, is the keystroke ID before leaving the external window and key KD uh, N after returning, right? So we have N after returning. So there was a keystroke for 52. Then I went to this Chrome, I left Translog. I did some stuff that was not recorded in Translog. And then I came back to translog and the next keystroke was this 52. So um, it might help you to figure out when in the process um, actually somebody left to consult the external resources. And we have here the keystroke 
And the SG is the source group ID and the, so it's SG. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so maybe it has uh, changed from ST to SG for source group ID and target uh, coming of leaving and coming back and so on. So, so this, uh, but yeah, so if you, if you see some inconsistency, I'm happy if you uh, tell me, look, uh, I found a feature that is not listed here and then maybe, or if you say, well, um, this doesn't really make sense. I'm uh, very happy to look at this, but in principle, uh, the features should, should be all in this table here listed and, um, and explain, explained. And the features are supposed to be such that they make sense. So the time is always uh, re related to uh, to the time of the uh, in the in the translation process. The duration is well as the doer is the duration as the name says is the duration of this event here, 40 seconds or so. And fix is the number of fixation. The D fix is the duration of the fixation, but because there was no eye tracker, um, no fixations were recorded. Then, of course, this what was edited while I was in translog is not in this file. This file only contains the stuff that was produced outside translog. What was produced inside translog is in the other files. Uh, okay. Professor, I have a related question about the, the two servers, the um, the Jupyter server and the uh, the Yawat uh, crit server, where we upload and get tables. Um, if we decide later on to run an experiment, run a, a study, uh, how would we get access to those two? We would have to uh, obtain a private account somehow. Yeah. So, okay, so we have here. Um, um, membership. So in that case, so so that would be a membership. Contact me if you're interested, and we, we can uh, open a, a private account for you. Okay. And then as for the the other parts, uh, these four or five scripts that you have on the uh, Jupiter as as notebooks in Jupiter. Um, I'm not really familiar, but I guess I could download Jupiter on my computer and then run those scripts on my computer with with the data the tables that I've downloaded also yeah you can download anaconda and anaconda is a package for, to uh, install a jupyter and notebook on your anaconda yeah i I've, I've tried that for some reason i had difficulties with the jupyter install but i will try again <laughs> oh well, yeah. usually it will install Jupyter directly. I mean, um, so the problem here, so you can download, install this, and um, and then it will open something like. So I have installed it actually. So you, uh, so if I go here and I ask for Jupyter, why is it so slow? Here. OK, so if I click this guy here and then, um, well, it takes some time and uh, it will then open something like this. So this runs in the background. You are not supposed to close this um, uh, this program here, but then it will open also a browser tab with a Jupyter notebook and you can do whatever you like in this Jupyter. But of course, um, what happens then if you install this on your computer you will uh, yeah you can download all the data and you can also have the data on your uh, on, on your computer and access this um, yes so that's possible if you do this on the on the server as we do uh, you have of course access to all the data but of course you can also download all the data from the sourceforge which is about uh, 40 gigabytes or something like this. Um, 